Welcome back, PC here when I PC Tech. I have the Pixel 3 XL running the stock Android 12 here on the left hand side of your screen and here the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra running Android 12 again but using One UI 4. So what you're gonna see guys in this video, I'm gonna compare the stock Android 12 experience to the Samsung fine-tuned and tailored One UI 4 Android 12 experience. I just want to understand all the differences but of course also the similarities implemented both by Google and Samsung, right? Because at the end of the day, they're using the same operating system as one will say, but One UI is really much more than just a skin, same with MIUI, same with Oxygen OS and etc. So let's start first with the always on display. This is the always on display on the Samsung One UI 4. This is the always on display in the Pixel stock from Google. In the Pixel 3 XL Android 12 implementation, we only have the option to select this thing here, always show time and info. On the other hand, in One UI 4, there are plenty of options. You can decide to turn it on, only show it for 10 seconds, show it always, show it scheduled, only show for new notification, which is actually a One UI 4 exclusive feature. You have different clock styles, you can show music information, and etc. and etc. So it's pretty much full fledged as to very basic, at least on my Pixel 3 XL. Let's move now to the lock screen. When you turn on your phone, there's the lock screen, you get a very nice insight here of the clock and etc. and etc. When you click the clock here on the Samsung phone, you're gonna get some widgets. So you have music, you have the weather, you have calendar, you have screen time from Digital Wallwing, and you also have something new. This is a voice recording widget for you which you need to use the Samsung voice recording, but that's actually quite new. When you go inside the settings, you'll be presented with a plenty of options. So you can rearrange all of those things, you can reorder them and you can decide what to include and exclude. On the other hand, again, into the Pixel 3 XL, we have a rather simple experience, right? So you can just swipe up to open, you can review your notifications, right? You can just click here to go inside your home and of course you can access your smart devices, but I think it does really get as simple as that. Those are the options from the Pixel 3 XL, so you can decide to show some private content or not, you can add text on the lock screen, you can also add wallet if this function is supported, you have option to access the device controls, which I actually showed you, and of course also music and etc. Then we have the always on display, but it is limited to what it is. Here on the other hand, Samsung offers quite a lot of other things, but probably the main important information or the main difference is exactly these widgets here. Let's talk about the home screen. Home screen on both phones looks quite dissimilar. Just wanna show you guys something. When you hold your finger here, right, you're gonna get access to the widgets. And when you do the same, I'm gonna do the same here on my Pixel, right, you get access to widgets here. And this here is Android 12 stock experience. This here is Android 12 One UI 4. This here was redesigned it did not look like this in the One UI 3. The main difference is that you are getting here this search bar, which also exists on Android 12, and you are also getting a suggested widget. I would say here, the implementation from Google and Samsung is really very, very similar. Let's get a look on the quick panel right now. So do like this, do like that. On the Samsung One UI 4, there is a very clear separation for um, the notifications in case you're getting silent or alert notifications. And one of the biggest changes is here this redesign of the brightness bar, which is shown right now here, but you can also change it and it's bigger. When I do like this on my Pixel, you can just see the one on the Android 12 is even bigger than the one we've seen on the Samsung. Also, the very big difference here is just the design. Just look at this, guys. All the toggles here on the Pixel, right? They're really very, 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 very big, right? And I can just scroll to the right and just show you. Here we have a rather standard design. I'm not sure what I like more. Probably this, this a bit more compact. And this has been also the way it was designed into One UI 3.0. So here I would say the biggest change is really only a design decision. Here on the Android 12 stock, we are having these very, very big buttons. And you can just see when you toggle these buttons, right, they are very tactile, they do response, and you have sometimes these fancy animations, but it is what it is. Let's talk about the dark mode. You can enter here on display and you can just go down and see dark theme. You can enter here on display and voila, you have just dark mode settings, right? The Samsung one, turn on a schedule, we have sunset to sunrise, or you can opt to go for a custom schedule. When you go inside, 
you know, the Pixel Experience is pretty much the same. You can just use the Dark Team and you can just use a schedule. So I'm just going to turn it on, guys, so that you can just see the way it looks. We are now using the Dark Mode, but there is something, guys, that I like a bit more on the Pixel. Let me just show you. When I hold the finger here and I go to Wallpaper and Styles, right, there is something down below called Theme Icons. It's still better right now, but when you select it, then all the icons are going to get changed, you see, and they're going to be using the new material you design. Right, this doesn't happen on the Samsung, they don't have this option. When you click your finger here and you go to wallpaper, right? you see you have this apply dark mode to wallpaper, but there is no way for you to change the icons. Right, So this implementation here is quite nice. It does not support all the icons still, but I think it's a very good start. Let's discuss multitasking options. Traditionally, Samsung is a winner here, but let's see what you can do on Android 12. So let's say I'm going to open Play Store. right? And I'm going to just hold my finger here, right? You see you have up info and split screen, okay? I'm going to do the same on my Samsung, right? And I'm going to hold the finger on the Play Store. We have the application info, but also the option to open this in a split view. But I want to show you something else. Once you click here, open in a pop-up view, right? You're going to get this window. And you know you can just do and drag it right like this. Something that really comes from Android 12, when you click here, right, you're going to be able to right now pin all this control button. So you can just resize it like, okay, I just want this to be smaller, right, I can just make it disappear, right, it's going to be minimized, I can just open it back, I want to maximize it, right, and it can even close it. And this comes from Android 12. Let's check the split screen, I'm going to hit split screen here, and I'm going to open another application. See, right now I can just open an application already in my recents or already from my recents. When I click here, the option to open in a split view, I can actually select any of the application. And in fact, there is an option coming from One UI 4 Beta that will allow you to put everything into the split screen. Let's see how the interaction looks like when you click here, right? You're just going to be able to resize it like this. Same from the One UI, right? When you click here though, you have the option to switch the screens, no option like this here, right? And then of course you can have this pin down to the edge panel, right? Which is quite nice. Of course, there is no edge panel here, right? And yeah, no edge panel on the pixel. And what is this pinning to the uh, edge panel? Let me show you guys. When you like this combination or this combo, and now it's pinned, I can always go back and just call it like this. It is very, very useful. It's time to check the privacy as one of the biggest updates in the One UI 4, but also in Android 12, are really focused on privacy. There are things already implemented um, by Xiaomi, for example, in the latest iterations of MIUI, which I like very, very much. So it's time to see the changes in privacy settings and also compare it. I'm now inside the settings, so I'm gonna click privacy here on my Pixel and also privacy on my S21 Ultra. For a reason, uh, privacy loads a bit slower here. Okay, so first thing you can see, you have this permission usage history, which is absolutely new for One UI 4. When you expand this, you're going to get access to all of your resources like the camera, the microphone, the location, and of course, which application you use it. So for example, if I click here on the camera, I can see the Telegram is being using my camera. I don't know why camera application and etc and etc this is really something that is pretty much very much welcomed permissions right and also applications please so when you click on application you can just see now a list with applications using your permissions when you click here on the privacy dashboard the only change here seems to be the way it's visualized so in the circular form here and using bars on the Samsung One UI 4. Now you can just see location and you can just see camera. When I click on the camera, I can just see which application use my camera. Same with the location. When I click on the location, I can pretty much see which of my applications have been using my location. Let me open locations here so that you can see how this differs. I would say is about the same. All the changes to the privacy settings I believe are very important because we are getting really more and more control on our phones and the way the applications are using our resources such as camera microphone. We have also the permission manager. I'm opening it inside my Pixel 3 XL. I'm opening this here on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. As you can just see, this is probably one to one. It's almost above the same. It's already Android 12. Two of the new changes related to permissions you know are this 
key indicators when you start a camera here you're gonna get this indicator same on the Samsung phone and of course then you pretty much have the same toggles here so you can restrict camera access for all of your applications and services and you can restrict the microphone for all of your application and services. One UI 4 gives you also the option to show you clipboard access you can just see it is pretty much the same on the stock Android 12. I would say that the privacy and the permission settings are almost one to one. If you have been following all the discussions and seen also my videos on Android 12, you know that they implemented something called the universal search. So with this you are able to search your phone and more, but it takes things even one step further. Let me just show you guys, when I type vol for volume, I'm able to control all my volume settings directly here from the search. Let me try to do this on my Samsung. I'm gonna start typing VOL and you can just see I get access to volume, right? It will open the application and if I click one more time, I'm gonna get insight so I can do whatever I want, but it's not really like the one we see on Android. Here, it's really crazy. The implementation is so good. You can search through all of your contacts and system settings, and it's quite nice. Although Samsung did also a quite nice job, they're now giving you suggested settings. So you see, last time I was searching for the volume. This time, when I enter the search, I directly get suggested settings, right? So I can just go here, click volume, and boom, voila. So Samsung also try to up their game, but it's not yet there. This universal search is really working very nicely, but this is the first beta one, guys. And the Android 12 here on my Pixel is actually the beta 5. So who knows, probably in one of the other betas, Samsung are going to up their game and even put some new functionalities, hopefully also universal search. Last but not least, I wanna to touch base with you on some of the visuals. Now pay attention when I open my app draw on my Pixel, right? You see there is this very nice bouncing animation. Let me just try to do it one more time. Just look at here, okay? See, one more time. And let's just see what happens on the Samsung, yeah? It's a bit boring, right? And it's not only here. Let me just show you guys. If I go, for example, in my settings menu, Okay. When you scroll down to the list, you see how everything piles up, right? And it's the same. You just have this very nice visual tactical feedback, right? As to here, right, you just see one animation, but it's not so fluid. And at the end of the day, I really hope that Samsung are going to implement this, right? Just see here. I really love this. Let's try to compare some of the other visuals like doubles. For example, this is how we can go to airplane mode, right? You can just see doubles pretty much look the same, although the ones from the stock Android really are bigger and probably just something that Samsung can adjust, right? I would say it almost look one-to-one, -one, only the fact that these here are bigger. Let's check some of the other visuals like changing wallpaper or let's say adding widgets. So I'm holding my finger here and you get this very nice animation. When I do the same, right, we have here the standard One UI design language, right? I like the Android 12 stock animation here a bit better. Also, let me just try to open a folder, okay? Opening, closing, but see here, if I open this folder, then the icons somehow reshuffle, which I think is animated very well. What happens when you do it on the Samsung, right? You just open a folder, you get this like standard Samsung animation. Doesn't really matter how many apps you have, right? So it just works the same. You need, of course, to consider the fact that Samsung do offer theme park. They do offer tons of modules like the home app from Goodlock and you can pretty much customize everything you see. As to in Android, that's what you get, okay? Let's go and check the recent menu. I just do it like this, okay? And they really come from the left. Let's check it on the Samsung, okay? It's pretty much the same implementation, so from the left, from the left, okay, you can just go there. Something that I really like here on the Samsung, when you just do like this, you have the option to close it all from here. What drives me nuts into the Android 12 stock, when I just do like this, I need to scroll down and clear it all, okay? Which is actually very, very much annoying. There are of course other perks that we can see on Android 12 still missing here. So when I go to the recent menu, I'm now able to directly copy the link and even save the image. Right, so I can just copy, I can save it, I can even share it. When I do like this, right, you just don't have this level of control, right? And I really hope that Samsung are going to put it probably in one of the next beta. So this one here is very, very useful. Let's now compare the music control. Now I'm listening to a song from Spotify. You just get this very nice menu here. And of course you have the Android 12 option to select the output, okay? So I'm just going to try to listen it now on my Pixel, all right? We pretty much still see the same and 
can click here on the phone speaker right and you have the level of the volume and you can also try to get a new device so this has been implemented straight from Android 12 it is working exactly the same way let's try to share guys the volume rocker when I click once I only get it and then I can click here on the dots and then you just see the style which I don't like right how does this look on the Samsung one let me just show you click one more time click on the three dots and you have this nice transparent somehow semi-transparent volume bars and I really hope that Google will implement something like this because this one is really unified with the singular bar as to here right one time you have this nice bar this big bar okay and then the next time guys you want to do something you're getting this design which is a bit weird for me and I really hope that Google will change it what happens when you scroll to the most left then of course you have the Google feed same here on the Samsung though when you go inside the home settings add media page to home screen right you can choose Samsung free Google discover or you can even remove it right so right now I've removed it I don't have Google feed no Samsung free swipe to access Google application I will remove that one okay right now okay see I still have the very same clean look no Google application whatsoever one last visual test guys I'm just going to do like this so that you can just see the notifications and the way it looks like right so here I told you Samsung are doing a better job combining silent alerts with the regular notifications so that you can just decide what you need what you don't need manage it better really and there are probably other things I'll probably do a follow-up video but those are the main things I wanted to show you like all the differences and all the similarities from the Android 12 and the One UI 4 and as you can just see right now I'm just getting a notification in real time so it was pretty much the same experience you can just pop it out pop it in you can reply directly here from the notification that you get on the screen although Android 12 and One UI 4 does look quite the same I would say that one of the biggest changes is really Google using the Material U design. I'm not sure if Samsung is going to try to use something inside Samsung application. You know about the Material U design. Every time you go and let's say you change a wallpaper, let me just for example go and choose this one here, you're going to get like practically everything set up from scratch like pretty much get a brand new phone all the toggles colors change and i think this is really fantastic samsung have something very very similar but you need to use good luck you need to use theme park and it's not so intuitive uh, the way google did it really deserves applause i want to show you guys something else so let me just go and i'm gonna choose this cat here so i'm gonna set it on both the home and the lock screen and then you can just see how everything really changes now all the toggles if I go inside you're gonna see we have this color a bit more dim even the color of the volume rockers now a lot of the Google applications like the calendar and the mail and the Google keyboard are acting exactly the same way so I would say right now this is one of the biggest differences I really hope that you have enjoyed this video if that's the case don't forget to hit the like button and guys please subscribe to the channel Please also, you and your family stay safe until we meet in one of my next videos. With that said, we are still over and...